Hi there, this is Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial will show you how to paint this canyon waterfall painting on a 10 by 20 canvas. This painting is inspired by the Havasu Falls in Northern Arizona by the Grand Canyon. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm doing this on a 10 by 20 canvas. It's one of those long form canvases. The composition works really well with this size because of the long waterfall in the high canyon. If you don't have the 10 by 20, you can do this on a 11 by 14 or 12 by 16. You'll just have to make the composition a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing out um, some basic lines on this painting to kind of help get things started here. So we're going to start with our horizontal line, and I guess this would be the horizon line. Um, and it's about four and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas, give or take. You don't have to have it be exact, but I measured four and a half inches and I'm going to do a horizontal line. So I'm just drawing with a pencil. So that's the line where the bottom of the waterfall will be and where our water line will be. And everything above that is the canyon and the tree and the skies. So we have this really long waterfall, um, but we're going to define the top of our canyon. And so we're going to start on the upper right part of the canvas and draw a a wavy sort of line, an uneven line, and it's going sort of diagonal. So the right part of the canyon is a little bit higher and it gets, goes down a little bit lower. And then to make another sort of elevation in the canyon, just to make this composition a little bit more interesting, I did a another formation over on the left. So kind of a, a curved line that goes down to our water line. And then we have two rock formations on the very bottom of the canvas. So one on the left and one on the right. Both of them are kind of about the same size, but different in shape. So that's the drawing of our composition. And that's going to lay the groundwork for painting everything in. We're going to start at the top with our sky color. And I'm loading two colors on my palette. Cerulean blue and titanium white. And if you don't have those colors, you can use any light blue, any white. And we'll need our water. And I'll be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. And you can use any flat brush for this. So dip a little bit in the water, kind of tap it dry. And we need to make a super, super light blue. So I'm gonna grab a big chunk of the white and a teeny tiny bit of that light blue. This is a sky blue color. So it's very, very light. And I'm even gonna go lighter. So I'm gonna grab more white and make it very, very light blue. I like to not have my colors blend all the way on the canvas because I like a little bit of variation in my sky. But we're gonna paint everything above that canyon line. And I am going to have the directions of my strokes kind of be expressive. There's a lot of expression in this painting, so you can um, loosely paint this sky, kind of do these angular strokes, let those different um, darker parts of the blue blend with the lighter parts of the white. Just don't make the blue super dark. Just try to keep it super light and just go ahead and fill in everything above that line. You can see how I'm kind of going at an angle around that canyon line and you don't have to do that. I just did that to kind of make the sky a little bit more expressive. So when you look at the painting, you look at the sky, the strokes aren't just going left and right in a uniform direction. They're kind of, you can see the strokes in the sky. So it just adds another layer uh, to the painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead, fill this all up. I'm making the bottom part slightly more blue, but don't make it too dark. Just a little tad bit more of the lighter blue at the bottom, but blend a lot of white at the top. And make sure the tip of your brush really defines that canyon line. So you don't want to, um, you can go below the canyon line because we're gonna be painting over it anyway with a darker color. But try to really define that line and that is our sky area. If you're working on a stretched canvas, you can extend the colors to the sides of the canvas. I did not do this for this demonstration. Next, we're gonna rinse our brush off and start working on the beautiful red colors in the canyon. So get all that blue off your 
brush, rinse it off, dry it, and you'll need three colors for the canyon. You will need burnt sienna, which is a dark reddish brown color, and that's really going to bring out that red that's in the canyon. You also need Mars black for our dark shadowy areas and titanium white. So if you need to freshen up your titanium white on your palette, go ahead and do that as well. We will also still be using that flat brush that we used in the sky. So grab your three quarter flat and go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my burnt sienna with a little bit of that white to make it a little bit lighter. So a, a big chunk of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the white, and I'm gonna get it right there on the tip of my flat brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and define this canyon line and it's gonna make a light reddish brown color. And so just using the tip of the brush, go ahead and define that line. That's the line that you drew with your pencil earlier. And you should be covering up that pencil line. It shouldn't be showing through. Um, it's okay if you have to go over your blue a little bit. Just make sure there's no white canvas showing between your brown line and your sky that you painted in. And I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. And our direction of the stroke, so we're going to be painting our canyon in using a combination of the black and the brown and the white. And our direction of the strokes are for the most part going to be short vertical strokes that blend on the canvas. So we're going to really try our best to not over blend our colors. We're going to take advantage of the fact that when we do our stroke, our different combinations of that red brown kind of blend differently with the black and, and the white. So when I go reload my brush, I'm going to grab different amounts of white and brown and um, black. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of is the black is such a strong color and it will take over fast. So try not to do too much black. You see how that black with the gray kind of makes it like a reddish grayish brown. So just by doing these short vertical strokes with using the full width of the brush, we're gonna get the different textures and the different colors in that canyon. And so you see how dark that black stroke was? Um, you just don't, when that happens, you wanna grab your towel, wipe it off because that black is just gonna spread everywhere and to be too dark. But we do want dark shadowy areas in there as well as lighter. So lots of darks and um, lights too. So. When I said full, the, for the most part, we're doing vertical strokes. You can, in some areas, like what I did right there, I started going more diagonal, and that's okay to do that. It gives it a little bit of loose expression and variety, but for the most part, everything's going vertical because it's a very vertical canyon, and our strokes are just going in that direction. So just keep applying different amounts of those three colors. We will be painting that entire canyon area. So this step takes quite a bit of time. We will also be painting the waterfall. Um, so the the dark canyon under the waterfall. So don't worry about leaving a blank spot in the middle where our waterfall is gonna be because that waterfall is gonna be painted over the canyon so that we'll be able to see the dark water or the dark rock formation underneath our layer of waterfall. So just keep applying the short little strokes of the different colors. Um, just like I said, bear in mind about that black. You don't want it to be takeover, but you do want some dark shadowy areas in there so doing a few strokes of the black with the brown is helpful so a nice even balance of um, most of dark and lights um, but the canyon is mostly like a dark dark reddish color overall so I'll just keep applying your colors it's relax don't um, be afraid to be too restrictive. You can loosen up your strokes and be more expressive with this. Um, I'm going to freshen up some white on there. The white gets taken faster because we all right, use a lot of the white to mix with that black and the brown and then all of a sudden you don't have any more white left on your palette. Um, here's a, something important. So we have that other canyon, the other 
elevation of canyon, that curved part that we drew, um, right there, let's make that part dark around the edges. And when you do that, when you add some extra black in that area, it's going to make it stand out. It's going to provide enough contrast so the, the reddish, lighter part in front of the canyon is going to stand out. Um, so just make sure that area is dark. And then you can loosen up towards the bottom of the canyon. You can do more of the X style expressive strokes, especially if it becomes too tedious to keep doing all these vertical strokes everywhere. Um, you can go faster and loosen up and start doing um, angular strokes. So, I mean, the whole idea is to get all this color onto the canvas, but it's okay if our strokes are not all going in the same direction. We just want to focus on the color and the beauty of the reds and the different darks and lights in that canyon. Um, just make sure you, you're still applying a lot of that reddish brown in there that'll capture that red in the canyon. Then I extended a lot of the darker color towards the middle. Um, when you make that middle part where our waterfall is going to be, when you make that slightly darker, that's going to give us a good amount of contrast when we do the white layer of the water over it. It's going to look really pretty because the darker part of the canyon is going to kind of still show through the waterfall and it'll make it look more translucent than if we did lighter color in the middle. So here's my canyon so far. It, it, does, it takes quite a bit of time to do, so just take your time, relax, have fun, um, make sure you're covering up canvas so no big chunks of the white of the canvas is showing through. So you may have to go back and do some more layers and I'm just gonna fill this up. Um, when you get to the bottom of the canyon where our waterline is, you can use the tip of the brush to define that horizontal line right there. Um, that's a really important piece because we really want that line to be super hor horizontal. It's gotta look like that is the bottom of the canyon. and. Um, just keep applying more and more color on there. Keep grabbing different amounts of the light and the dark. And I'm gonna go silent here for just a bit. I will give you further instruction when we get to that other piece of the canyon on the left. Okay, so for this other part of the canyon on the lower left, we're gonna do some lighter colors in there. You may need to wipe your brush off with a towel if it's overloaded with too much dark, but I'm gonna grab white and that brown and I'm gonna define the edge of that canyon. And you can already see how that contrast is important because we did that darker shadowy area around that line. And so when we apply the lighter colors on there, it's going to stand out. So it's gonna start out kind of light in the upper right area, but then I'm gonna eventually go back to the dark colors towards the bottom of that canyon piece. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same kind of strokes, kind of vertical, kind of diagonal, kind of going in different directions here, but make sure your edge is nice and defined and lighter than the shadowy area and then start filling in the rest of the canyon with your different colors. I'm going to freshen up my burnt sienna here, that reddish brown color. You don't want to lose that red in there. So if you find that your canyon color is starting to turn more grayish, um, just make sure you get a lot of that reddish brown in there. That'll really bring out the red in the canyon and keep saying that. And um, so we're getting darker here towards the bottom, a little bit of black. Just try not to get too much black because then it gets overloaded. And I'm just kind of blending that lighter color that's at the top of that canyon piece to um, medium color and then to dark shadowy at the bottom and dark shadowy at the bottom of our canyon is going to make um, 
some for some really good contrast with that color in the water and also the splash of our waterfall. So try to get some dark shadowy areas, especially at the bottom of your canyon. I'm gonna have this piece kind of go towards the right a little bit, knowing that the waterfall is gonna cover that up anyway, um, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna go in and do some more strokes of our red brown here. Really get some of that red to pop. So I'm just grabbing red on my brush and I'm just doing short um, vertical strokes, textured strokes. Oh, too much white right there. All throughout the canyon, we'll have a, a pop of lighter color in that area, that's okay. We are going to need to let this canyon dry before we do our waterfall piece. It needs to be completely dry. So we're gonna jump ahead and paint our bottom of the water in. And I used the color bright aqua green and titanium white. So, um, and also freshen up your water because we don't want any brown lingering in this water. So to create this really bright, pretty turquoise water, I'm just gonna double load my three quarter wash brush in the bright aqua green and a little bit of white. And I'm gonna do left and right horizontal strokes. And um, it's not all the same solid light uh, aqua green color. It's kind of a mixture of the light aqua green and white. So it's not a gradient. Just do a variety of the blue and the white and just do left and right strokes. It's a pretty thin layer in this area. We'll be doing some reflection and water texture lines later. So this is just the base color right here. And you wanna really define your horizontal water line in there because that's an important piece. It should be horizontal um, and no canvas showing through. So really define that line in there and do left and right of the, the blue and the aqua. So different variations of the light blue and the white and just fill up the entire area and go around your rock formation. So remember we drew these two rock formations on the bottom of the canvas. You wanna go around it. I'm rinsing my brush off here because I got a little bit of brown in my water, which is actually kind of okay if you did that, but I wanted to make sure that there's no brown lingering on my brush anymore. So I rinsed it off real quick and just go ahead and fill in that rest of the area. Try to go around your rock formation, but if you wanted to paint over the rock formation and then do the brown over the blue, that's fine too. So already we have the pretty aqua green water and looks so lovely by the red of the canyon. Just the two colors contrast each other so well. And I'm just blending my blue and white together, getting my layer right here nice and smooth and even. So we have a little variation, a little streak of white in there and that is okay. I left my rock formations open. I'm just gonna, Go ahead and wipe my brush here and do my brown in the rocks. So the colors of the rocks on the bottom are the same as the canyon. They're slightly darker. What I did was I made this lower right one lighter at first. So I mixed a little bit of white with the burnt sienna color but I changed it to a darker color. So if you wanna do that, if you wanna start with a layer of a lighter color and then go in and add some darker colors in there, you can do that too, or you can just do it all a darker color. But the darker color on the bottom looks better because it gives it, makes it look like it's closer because it's um, darker and more shadowy. And so I did both of our rock formations. They're not exactly the same shape. They're slightly different from each other. And just defining the shape, I'm just, I did a layer of the burnt sienna in there and then I grabbed some black and I'm just kind of letting that black sort of blend, um, doing some expressive strokes, letting it blend, but not blend all the way. And I'm gonna make my uh, rock formation over here on the left a little um, darker. So I'm adding more of the, the black and the brown into it, but not blending it all the way in there. A little bit of black and brown on my brush in there. And especially towards the bottom, lots of dark shadowy right there on the bottom of that rock. Okay. 
By now, the canyon should be dry. Feel, um, especially in the middle, because this is where we're gonna be doing our waterfall technique. So make sure that's dry. If it's not, you can get a hair dryer and dry it real quick. You can take a break and come back. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna define the shape of our waterfall. And this is a number eight round brush. You can use any round brush. It doesn't have to be the number eight, but it's gotta have a nice point to it. Um, and I'm gonna mix blue and white together. I guess you can do it with just the white, but I wanted to grab my turquoise anyway because there's a little bit of turquoise color in this waterfall too. So get the paint right there on the tip of your brush because we're gonna be drawing or paint drawing our waterfall area. So we have our, our, our very vertical area right there in the middle. So I'm gonna start at the top and we have our piece right there at the top. It's a curved line. That's where the top of our waterfall is going to be. Um, it's not very wide, so it's easier to start out s super thin and make it wider than it is if you made it too wide and then you can't. You have to either paint over it or you'll just have to accept that your waterfall is too wide. So make it thin at first and we can always go wider. Um, but you wanna make your lines um, very vertical, so do your best to um, make it a vertical line when you're painting it, you can use the side of your canvas as a reference point. I guess if you wanted to get a T-square ruler out, you can do that, but um, you don't have to do that. And the bottom actually trumpets out slightly. So the bottom actually gets slightly wider on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead, rinse my round brush, set it to the side and grab my three quarter wash. So the technique of this is dry brush style. So when we load our brush, we're gonna wipe it off with a towel. And when you paint, you don't wanna press too hard and you don't want your strokes to be super opaque. They have to be see-through because we wanna, it's water, it's a waterfall, it's see-through. There's some shadowy showing through that that color. So I'm grabbing a little bit of white, a little bit of the turquoise, actually more, more white than turquoise, so a lot of white, teeny bit of turquoise in there. And I'm doing very, very light strokes. This should not be opaque, it should be see-through. So if it's coming out opaque for you, meaning solid, um, you need to wipe that brush off because you don't want a lot of paint on this brush. It is dry brush technique. It is feathery, light, and see-through. And notice how some of my strokes, I'm using the full width of the brush, but some of them, I'm using the tip of the brush on its side. So I'm doing a little bit of variety in that, and also variety in the sense that some of those strokes actually are pretty solid. Um, so most of the strokes are very see-through and very translucent, but on when I have the brush on the side, like I'm doing now, I have some very bright, um, solid, opaque lines by doing that. And that's gonna give your waterfall some variety. So it's for the most part, see-through, feathery, dry, but there are some brighter areas, like if the where that light is hitting the water and it's super bright in that area. And just keep, Painting, um, we, we're not trying to cover all the canyon. We should see some of the dark shadowy of the canyon showing through there. And also the fact that our waterfall gets slightly wider and trumpets out at the bottom. So the, the lines, I guess, kind of go at an angle towards the bottom. Um, I'm making the edges, so the left and right edges of the waterfall, slightly um, kind of outlined with the tip of the brush, so a little bit more opaque on the edges. Um, just be careful when you're going in to add your aqua color. Um, the waterfall mostly is bright white, but there are a few strokes of the aqua color in there. Um, we don't want the aqua to take over because we want the waterfall to be super bright and white in contrast against the color in the the water. So the water is mostly aqua. The waterfall is mostly white. Um, here at the top, I'm gonna make, make this super, super bright. So adding another layer of that white right there at the top where that water is going down over the canyon, there would be a lot of energy right there. So a big, um, bright white in that area and then just drag your brush down. 
So like I said, I'm holding that brush very lightly when I'm painting that. I'm even going um, grab my round brush in there and I'm just using that to apply more of that curved stroke. It's hard to do a curved stroke with a flat brush, so that's why I grabbed that round brush. And I'm just dragging it down and then a few um, vertical strokes with the tip of the brush. The best part of this painting is the bottom of this waterfall. So there, this is where most of that energy of the painting is, is right here at the bottom. Um, so your strokes down here are going in all sorts of directions. It's still the dry brush technique, although it is, um, there's a lot more white in this area, I guess it, it is a little bit more opaque. And over here, so we have our water splashing up and it's splashing up vertically in this area. So we're getting our stroke and painting kind of vertical strokes over there on the right. And then underneath the waterfall, we have X style strokes kind of going diagonal. And um, just make sure that you're not doing too much so it's not a thick chunk of white it's still dry brush but it's um you kind of have to work harder to get that stroke because there's not very many paint on i'm only applying just a very very small amount of paint on the tip of my brush but i actually got to work harder to get it to go on the canvas because of the lack of paint on my brush um but that that's how I create that technique. So just, there's a lot of energy, a lot of expression in this area. Um, just kind of make it go in all different directions. It's angling out all different ways. The splash of the waterfall, the dry brush part of the waterfall does go um, overlap our canyon. So we, we still see some of the, the canyon colors showing through the splash. A few st vertical strokes in there on the waterfall. I'm just going back in there and touching it up. Just be careful when you go back and add more to the waterfall. We don't want to lose the shadow that's showing through the water. And I'm just adding more of that splash. Again, there's very little paint on my brush, so I got to press harder, work harder to get it to show up. And okay, so this is an important piece right here. Our waterfall is reflecting in the water. Um, so we want to do just the white, none of the turquoise right now, just the white dry brush. And we want to dry brush a vertical area on the water. So this is where our waterfall is reflecting in the water. So again, there's very little paint on my brush and I'm dragging it vertically under the waterfall. So try to make this as vertical as possible all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. It does not have to be consistent throughout, meaning the the intensity of the white does not have to be the same everywhere. It looks better when you vary the intensity of the white. So some of it's more opaque, some is more see-through. And I'm just going to continue to drag this a little bit. It's a really pretty technique. It makes it look like that bright white from the fall is reflecting in that water. And then a little bit more splashes down there at the bottom, super bright right there, especially right there at the bottom where it's hitting that water. And then it adds some more splashes going upwards on the left and the right of the fall. I'm going to go in here and do some more vertical strokes in there using my hand as a guide against the side of the canvas just to make sure that it's not going slanted or anything, but that reflection is nice and vertical. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of turquoise on my brush and just kind of brush a little bit of turquoise in that area. Some turquoise in the splash as well, but that turquoise should not take over at all. It should be mostly white in that splash area, mostly white in the reflection. And then I'm just going to add some more. It's hard to stop doing this splash area because it's such a really pretty part of the painting. It's so expressive. So I'll keep going back in there and add some more splashes. I guess there can't be ever too much splashes until it turns completely opaque and takes over. So don't do too much.
You can even have some of your brush strokes from the splashes go in a circular, fast direction. So what I'm going to do next is actually paint some of the reflection of the canyon in the water. And we're also going to do this dry brush style. So uh, wipe the brush off or rinse and um, dry it. But load it with the, the burnt sienna and a little bit of white and wipe your brush off. And we're just going to drag it down very, very um, gently right under the canyon, that um, brownish color with a little bit of white. I'm not going to drag it all the way down into the water because I don't want to cover up all of that turquoise water, but I'm just going to allow it to reflect a little bit down into the water. And all that, all that was was dry brush technique, dragging it down. I'm going to add a little bit more of the reddish brown in there as well. And I'll zoom out here for you in just a second. Here we go. And so just dragging it down, down gently. And then... Go ahead, rinse your brush off, and I'm going to add a little bit more of white reflection underneath the splashes. So some of those splashes would be reflecting in the water as well. So taking that and dragging it down just a little bit, not as far down as the main waterfall piece. And of course, got to go back up there and do some more expression in the, the splash zone area. So what we're going to do next is actually do our water texture. And I did the water texture with the flat brush, but I also grabbed a palette knife for this. And I'll, I'll tell you why here in just a second, why the palette knife is useful. But let's start by adding a little bit of white to the tip of the three-quarter wash. And gently, very, very gently make horizontal lines in your water and of course these are overlapping our reflection so this is going to make it look like that reflection is in, under reflecting in the water and our horizontal lines is going to give us that water texture um, to make the water look really pretty and serene um, but with this palette knife so you can get some really interesting water texture by using this palette knife um, by loading your paint right there on the side and just making your, your vertical, or not vertical, but horizontal little marks in the water. It'll make it look like there's a little bit of uh, rapids in the water. Not really rapids, um, but just some water that's moving a little bit faster. Maybe it has some denser um, white in that area because it's splashing a little bit. But just doing a few little white horizontal marks kind of here and there, it gives a different kind of texture there in the water. It's certainly optional if you don't want to use the palette knife or you don't have something like this available. You don't have to. You can do all your little horizontal marks with a paintbrush. And try not to go overboard. It's kind of fun doing this, but then you realize, oh, I did way too much and now I can't see my reflection anymore. So try um, to hold back a little bit, not do too many of those lines. I'm gonna do a few more marks over here on the right, give this side a little bit more attention. And then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of turquoise lines in there. Also optional, very, very subtle detail, but adding a little bit of turquoise in there gives some variation of that color in the water with the texture. And I'll go in there with um, a flat brush, my three-quarter flat too, and do some um, horizontal mark lines with the turquoise and white. Just a little bit, not too many. And just by having those lines overlap our reflection is going to really make it look like that reflection is going in the water, reflecting. I will be demonstrating the trees next. You can certainly leave the trees out of this painting. It looks beautiful like this with just the waterfall and the canyon and the water. But the extra step is the trees, which I will be demonstrating next. And I am going to be doing the tree, tr the large tree over on the right over here with Mars Black. 
and the number eight round brush. Now, if it helps, you can draw this trunk out with a piece of chalk, um, or you can just kind of wing it like I am right now. But this is a very, very tall tree. You can see how it goes from the bottom. It's it's sitting on top of this rock. So the trunk, the bottom part of the trunk doesn't touch the bottom of the canvas. So it's, it's kind of a little bit lower than the rock situated on that rock. Um, and the, it goes all the way to the top. So it's a very long canvas. So it goes all the way up there. Um, and it branches off into two major branches. So this is the major branch on the left. So we're getting thinner as we go up and, um, it's thicker on the bottom so this area down here is thicker and then we have a it branches off to the right and it goes off the canvas on the right and you can make your tree trunk different if you want your branches to go a different way I didn't want anything covering the waterfall so um, that was my choice not to have my branches covering the waterfall but if you wanted to do that you can um, as I'm doing this trunk I may grab a little bit of brown that just kind of helps with the color variation not much of a difference but um, instead of just using the black all throughout um, so it forks off right there in the middle and then we have some smaller branches that are coming out on that branch on the right so I'm um, to get the smaller branches using more of the tip of my brush and not the rest of the bristles so get that paint right there on the tip it helps to add water to your black so that the black waters down a little bit and gets a little bit more flowy um, and your branches get very very thin so get to get those thin branches you want to hold your brush very lightly and make sure you're using just the tip of the bristles of the brush but to get it thicker like this line right here I'm doing thicker I'm pressing down all the way on that brush using the full amount of bristles so it, it requires a lot of practice using the round brush to doing some thick and thin strokes um, to really get that technique of the tree branches down and so what I'm doing here is I added a little bit of white to my brush and I'm doing a little bit of reflection on the right side of that branch. So a little bit of white right there. It's blending with the black and turning gray because that black is still very wet. Um, but just a bit of white right there on the, the left side of the branches. And I'm doing some smaller twig sort of branches on the bottom, the base of the tree, very, very thin. So I love this eight round brush. This is the Princeton Velvet Touch brush that I use for many of my tutorials now. I link it um, in the tutorial as well. But I like this brush because it's got the, the point on the tip of the bristles and it's got a thicker bristle. So you can do thick and thin strokes at the same time. If you prefer using an angle brush for branches, um, you can do that. Or if there's some other brush that you like using for your trees, definitely use that brush that you're mo most comfortable with. So over here in the lower left part of our rocky area, ground area, we have some twigs and shrubbery, um, lots of thin, thin strokes down there. We don't, um, it's not as symmetrical, so I'm not putting a tree over here, but I'm gonna do a smaller tree up high here after I do this part. So just uh, flicking the brush to create some very, very thin, wispy lines down there to create some shrubbery um, sticks and branches in that area. And then in our upper left part of our canyon, we have a smaller tree up there. I'm going to go in here and do a little bit of lighter color down there. But over here up in the left, upper left, we have a smaller tree kind of situated at the top of that canyon. Um, and so it's just painting a smaller tree, thicker trunk at the bottom. It stems out very, very thin lines for the branches. You can do as many branches as you want. Um, keep in mind, a lot of this is going to be covered with green leaves. So some of our branches may be hiding by the time we're done with this tree. So just a very basic tree that stems off into two major branches and then there's smaller twigs from there. And so if you didn't want to do the leaves, I guess it looks really pretty without the leaves if you don't want to add the green 
to this painting, but I love how the green looks in this painting. It was actually, besides the splash of the waterfall, doing the leaves was my second favorite part of this painting. Um, adding a little bit more highlight on the right side of the tree. It really gives that trunk some more dimension. Um, if you're not comfortable with the highlighting thing, you don't have to do the highlight. You can simplify it and just do a solid black tree trunk if you wanted to. So there is our painting uh, with the branches and I will be demonstrating the leaf portion next. I did these leaves with Brilliant Yellow Green, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. So you don't have to use those exact colors. You can use any light green, any dark green. I just, when I do tree leaves, I like to grab a light green, a dark green, and I like to grab white and use black. And that creates different tints and shades of our leaves. And I'll be doing this with a palette knife. So I'm actually gonna make a shade of our green by mixing a little bit of black into that dark green. So we start out dark and I have the paint right there on the edge of the palette knife right there. It's gonna make your stroke of your leaf kind of rounded. And so that's the look I was going for, um, a rounded leaf shape. So right there on that tip where the ed the edge of the palette knife is rounded. So that's how it's making the rounded shape. And I'm loading quite a bit of paint on this. I'm going for thick strokes to create texture. That texture, that thickness of that leaf is going to make your leaf stand out because the texture below it is flat. And so this stands out better. And I'm just going to go all over our branches on the tree on the left and the tree on the right. I'm doing it in clusters too. So it's not all over. There's still a lot of branch and a lot of canyon showing through. Um, grabbing your bright green next and going over this in layers. So lots and lots of thick, uh, rounded, bright green color in there and you see how it's in clusters all, all of those are grouped together so I did the darker leaf and I'm clustering the lighter color over the dark one but I'm not covering the dark up the dark is still showing through so there's the bright cluster of the leaf and it's okay if all of a sudden your lighter greens mixing with the darker green it's kind of what we want is some color variation so that's okay if it's mixing together and I didn't wipe the palette knife off either when I switched colors in there. So if you didn't want to do this with the with the palette knife, you can do the same technique with a round brush. It requires a little bit more effort and it's not as expressive, but you can just take your round brush and do dots, um, little stippling dots with the leaves. You can even, if you wanted your leaves, if you're okay with square shaped leaves, you can take a small flat brush and do little flat um, strokes with your leaves. And um, you see that I added white to my palette knife as well. So mixing a little bit of white into that green um, is gonna make your brighter layer. So this is, it went from dark leaves to your bright yellow green and now it's an even brighter color. So dark to light when we're doing the leaves. And so this is our third layer with that brighter color of the white mixed with the green. So this, step in the painting was actually very enjoyable um, because you can with when you use the palette knife it really allows you to relax and be less restrictive and just let the paint do its thing so you don't have to think too hard um, and it's just super relaxing I like I don't grab my palette knife often in my tutorials but ones that do I really enjoy using it especially when I get to be a little bit more loose and expressive with it um, so I'm going to do some greenery in this area down here as well, but it's not going to be, um, it's going to be a little bit more messy down here. Not rounded leaves, just kind of leaves going all over the place here at this point. Just grabbing different amounts of the dark green, the lighter green, and the white. I'm gonna go in on the tree in the upper left and add a few more branches in there. So this is 
the smaller round brush. This is actually a number four round brush that I grabbed. Just wanted to paint some smaller branches in there so that I can paint more leaves in that area. So I'll rinse that off and set it to the side, grab my palette knife again, and do some more leaves in that area. I really like how the green looks in this painting. It's just so much um, colors contrasting each other and all working together. The green really makes it look pretty and um, full of life. And I'm just going in there and adding those colors. There isn't any further steps I need to explain for this tutorial. I'm basically going to spend time going in and I'm going to continue to add to my leaves, um, layering them on there, adding more texture, thick textures in our leaves um, on this tree. And then I'll go back in and add some more thicker textures on the uh, larger tree over here on the right, doing different variations of color of light. And I may go in and add some darker colors. I overlapped those leaves just a little bit over that waterfall, but I did not want to overlap too much because I don't want to take away from that. But I will go silent here. This painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I hope that you enjoy painting this waterfall. I found a lot of therapy in painting this. There's something about painting a waterfall and being able to channel your energy into the, the energy that is the waterfall. Something about healing, about painting water, and it's this was such a pretty design to do. So thank you for watching. Thank you for painting along with me.